He doesn't want to be a New Orleans Pelican. He wishes he was somewhere else. He, he wasn't happy with how the Pelicans brought him back. He thought it was too slow, that he hated how they had him in little short bursts. We came in, we talked about it. I said, Skip, he might be the first guy to turn down that max contract in his rookie season, his rookie, his, his rookie contract. He doesn't want to be there. He, he's given me no indication that he wants to be there. Because at the beginning of the season, I told the world, if y'all ever want to know if I want to be here, just ask me. And instead of asking me, <clears throat> the world just ran with narratives. And so when my family was going out in public, they're getting harassed by people on why we don't like New Orleans or why I don't want to be here when that's not the case at all. Every time I check my phone, it's always something negative. Even when you're trying to make positive of the situation, it was very tough. So it was a roller coaster for sure, but my family, Pels, Ms. Benson, they were always there. Thank y'all for really sticking with me the past year. This is the fifth metatarsal. This is the part of the foot that Zion Williamson broke. His particular fracture is what's called a Jones fracture, meaning that it occurred at or near the base of the bone. Jones fractures are a little bit difficult to heal because the supply of blood is limited in that part of the body. In a lot of cases, it's necessary for athletes to require surgery in order to minimize the likelihood of setbacks during the recovery process. And this was the case with Zion Williamson. In September of 2021, Zion underwent surgery on his broken right foot. One of the issues with recovery from a Jones fracture is that you can't bear weight on it or else you're gonna run the risk of re-injury and inhibiting the recovery process. Now for a player of Zion's build, this makes it an even longer process of recovery because not only do you have to allot the necessary amount of time to let the bone heal, you also need to allot time to get back into shape and shed any additional weight that was gained during the recovery process. Now, for the average person like you and me, this probably wouldn't be a huge deal. But for a world-class freak of nature generational athlete like Zion, the recovery process is a lot more complicated. And so, as NBA fans are well aware, Zion had a rather lengthy recovery process. It's been over a year since Zion played last, with his most recent game coming on May 4th, 2021, where he would record 23 points, 12 rebounds, and 7 assists in a win against the Golden State Warriors. Since then, shows like First Take and Undisputed have ran with every tidbit of information related to Zion Williamson's recovery, using every piece of information, every social media post as a way to fuel an agenda, a narrative that promotes one idea. Zion wants out. One of the biggest catalysts of speculation throughout this entire ordeal was when it was reported that Zion Williamson would be conducting his rehabilitation process in Portland. On January 5th, 2022, Michael Scotto from Hoops Hype shared a statement from David Griffin, the Pelicans' executive vice president of basketball operations. In the statement, David Griffin clearly states that medical imaging illustrated a necessity to dial back the rehabilitation process. He also clarified that both Zion and the team found it best for him to conduct his rehab away from the team. Zion reiterated this sentiment, stating in no uncertain terms, I will continue to put in the time necessary so I can get back on the floor with my team and represent Pelicans fans in the city of New Orleans at the highest level. By all indications from this statement, both Zion and the Pelicans made it abundantly clear that they were on the same page in regards to what the rehabilitation process was going to look like. But as you can imagine, this didn't stop the media from running wild with trade speculation. I, it doesn't feel like that type of commitment has come out of Zion's camp. Uh, foot injuries you always worry about, but I do believe that he's not motivated. And, and being in New York, I think he would have been motivated. And it says, you're going to build a winner around Zion. We're going to make him happy. How'd that work with CP3? How'd that work with AD? It's not going to work with Zion. Face it. So even after hearing from the horse's mouth, so to speak, the media still did everything in their power to fuel speculation that Zion wasn't committed to New Orleans and that he secretly wanted a trade. This is, of course, ridiculous because players undergo rehab away from their team all the time. It's not uncommon. 
Now, fast forward roughly a month from when that statement was first released, the Pelicans traded for CJ McCollum prior to the 2022 trade deadline, sending Josh Hart, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Tomas Sadoransky, and draft compensation to Portland. Shortly after the trade, CJ McCollum shared during All-Star Weekend coverage that he hadn't spoken with Zion directly yet, stating, I haven't had conversations with him directly, I've spoken with some people close to him and look forward to sitting down with him sooner than later. I know about as much as you do right now, but I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. Now, as you can imagine, the media wasted no time running wild with speculation around Zion not speaking directly with his new teammate, using it as further fuel that Zion wasn't committed to New Orleans. You're talking about the face of the New Orleans Pelicans franchise, Zion Williamson, CJ McCollum, who is the president of the Players Association, the most oh, responsible good... dude there is, and they have even talked yet? He does not have a good relationship with David Griffin. I don't care how many pianos David Griffin drags into the hotel lobby. So he doesn't talk to CJ. You know who he does talk to? RJ. RJ Barrett would love to go play with him. But perhaps the most scathing criticism came from Zion Williamson's former teammate, JJ Redick. This is a pattern of behavior with Zion that we are seeing again and again. And look, I was his teammate. I can describe him as a detached teammate. That, that, is, that is an accurate statement. This is just, this is basic, basic level of humanity being a teammate. The optics of not reaching out to a new teammate are certainly not good. At the very least, it's probably not the worst idea in the world to just shoot them a text welcoming them to the team. Zion definitely didn't do himself any favors. But at the same time, you have to consider what Zion was going through. He'd experienced setback after setback. He'd been dealing with these rumors for months now. He's away from his team, away from his family, and he's unable to play the sport that he loves. So I'm willing to cut him a little bit of slack here. And there's no doubt that the media was just looking for one small thing to run with, and this happened to be it. But shortly thereafter, CJ McCollum took the time to clear the air around the situation, showering Zion with praise, both both as a teammate and as a person. This misconception of what he's like as a human being. He's nice, he's fun loving, he's from the South. He loves his Southern cuisine, obviously, but I think the cool part is that his teammates like him, right? You, you see the media, you see how he's treated. He doesn't really speak very often. There's a lot of people that kind of speak for him behind the scenes. All in all, I've enjoyed my experiences with him. He works extremely hard. The rehab process is brutal, not only mentally, but physically. Now, towards the end of the season, when the Pelicans were making their playoff push, Zion Williamson would post this video. Now, to me, this is something that we see all the time. A guy who's been injured posts a video of themselves putting in work, and it's oftentimes a way to show that they're getting healthy again and that they're getting close to returning to play. As we saw in the beginning of the video, the media twisted something as innocent as a video of Zion dunking into some coded message about him not wanting to play in New Orleans and that they were somehow holding him back. He, he wasn't happy with how the Pelicans brought him back. He doesn't want to be a New Orleans Pelican. He doesn't want to be there. Now, don't get me wrong. There's no doubt in my mind that Zion was dying to be out there playing during the playoffs with the Pelicans. Any player with any semblance of competitive spirit would want to be out there with their team in a playoff setting to try and compete for a championship. So if Zion was frustrated about this, I don't blame him. It's okay to be frustrated with your team's medical staff not clearing you to play, even though you may still believe that you're healthy enough to be out there. But at no time did Zion indicate to anybody in any concrete, tangible terms that he was unhappy with how the Pelicans were handling his injury. They let him rehab in Portland, they had team staff with him through every step of the process, and by all measures, they did everything right to protect him and his health. We fast forward to now, and Zion recently signed his rookie max contract extension with the Pelicans. Following the signing, the Pelicans held a press conference where Zion could be seen with a smile on his face constantly, and he reiterated many times his gratitude to the organization as well as his commitment to helping New Orleans compete for a championship next season. But this one part of the press conference is, in my opinion, the most important part of all of this. And so when my family was going out in public, they're getting harassed by people on why we don't like New Orleans or why I don't want to be here when that's not the case at all. And here lies the issue. The media has no regard for the consequences of crafting these false narratives. They only care about clicks 
advertising dollars and ratings. They don't care that Zion's family was being harassed by fans due to the narrative that the media themselves crafted to try and drive a wedge between Zion and New Orleans. Zion was unable to play a sport that he's dedicated his entire life to for over a year. The toll that that had to have taken on his mental health must have been significant. He didn't spend his time away from the team making cryptic tweets or throwing shade at the Pelicans. He didn't run to the front office and ask for a trade. All he did was keep his head down while putting in work to get healthy and get back on the court again. The media failed to do the most important thing when it came to reporting on Zion's rehabilitation and his time away from the team. There was one person whose opinion is most important in this entire puzzle, Zion's. Because at the beginning of the season, I told the world, if y'all ever want to know if I want to be here, just ask me. And instead of asking me, <clears throat> the world just ran with narratives. As fans, as members of the media, it's really easy to look at players as these larger-than-life characters, as if they're actors on a stage performing for our own entertainment. The reality is, these are real people with feelings and families, and there are real consequences that arise from how the media manipulates public opinion on these players and their careers. It's one thing to make hot takes about on-court stuff, but the way the media attacked Zion's commitment, his weight, in the city of New Orleans caused a lot more damage than many people realize. Now, one would think that since Zion came out and stated both with his contract extension and his own words that he's committed to New Orleans, then the speculation should be put to bed now, right? There are very few that stayed in the location that's drafted them. We probably should have asked him, but athletes lie. So what, what do I expect you to say? Nah, I don't want to be here.